How's it going everybody? So I am really excited for the next couple of projects on this channel because over the next couple of weeks I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some very simple projects that would make amazing gifts. And I'm also going to be showing you how to do these projects with limited tools and how to customize them so that they are really your version of the project. Now I know there's a big worry over this holiday season because people are worried about shortages and things like that and I figure what better way to solve that problem than to just take some materials that you can find locally and just make beautiful projects that are truly customizable uh, for your friends and family. Or if you just want to keep these things for yourself, they make great conversational pieces as well. Now, I didn't realize until about uh, three or four days ago that Amazon actually sells all of the materials that I usually use in these projects, especially when you're talking about small quantities of hardwood lumber. Amazon does sell that, and so that means for the first time, I'm going to be able to put in my description everything that I use in this video so that you can follow along, buy the same products that I buy, or at least look at them and, and, and find a better price on them because the wood is overpriced on Amazon. Now today what I'm starting with is this piece of mahogany. Uh, this was originally four feet long. That's what I started with uh, because I came out this morning, I started the glue up process because that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you cut it, you sand it, you make sure everything is nice and square and you glue it together because we're gonna re-square this flat piece later. And then with the rest of this board, we're gonna be cutting this in half. We're gonna be trimming it down to the size we want and make it the shape that we want. And this is actually going to act as our rest. I didn't even tell you what I'm making. Because today we are making, I think it's called a valet. It's a place to store all of your EDC, essentially. It's, it's a place to store and charge your phone, as well as uh, hold your keys, to hold whatever it is that you have in your pockets. This is one place where you can store all of it, either on a bathroom counter, or on a nightstand, or on a work desk, or wherever you want this to be. This is where you can store all of your EDC. So if this kind of project is something that interests you, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It helps out my channel a ton. And I would be absolutely floored if you could follow me along the next couple of projects, because this will give you some great ideas for a couple of gifts that you can make. Okay, so this is where the fun part comes in, trying to figure out exactly how you want everything laid out. I think these all need to sit like this. I think that would look cooler. Uh, and this is all going to work because it's standing up on end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something really quick that I probably shouldn't put online. <clears throat> this is the valet that, <laughs> quote unquote valet, that I've been using in the bathroom for the last four months or so. This was a tray. It's my dinosaur valet. This is the tray that my daughter was going to throw away and I ended up just taking uh, because I knew that I wanted to make a valet at some point, but I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted. One of the things that I want to stay away from is these pockets, these cavities. You don't want anything that you can just throw something into because it ends up becoming full of trash and there's there's literally dead bugs in here and I don't know why these are in there and it just becomes a pocket for trash. And so one of the things that you can do is just set it up upright and that alone is going to keep you from throwing stuff like change and small items in there. And so that's kind of the direction I'm going. I don't want any cavities that I can throw money or stuff like that into. All right, I'm going to get started on this bottom sorting tray. This is the line I'm going to be following. Ah. Now what I want to do is I want to create a piece that wraps all the way from one side to the other. And to make that look nice, what I'm going to want to do is create kind of a waterfall effect. So let's say we want our miter to be about here. I'm going to take the 45 degree angle. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to remove this whole triangle here. And then what that means is that all this grain here is going to match up. That way when we go ahead and round that over, we're going to see all the grain follow through and hopefully that won't be as visible. I want this joint to completely disappear. All right, so I've talked about these in the past. This is just a piece of two by four that I've cut down to the right size. And this is a piece of belt sanding sandpaper that I throw over the top. Now these are really nice to have around in the shop. Using the sandpaper in this way actually got me through several years of not owning a belt sander. To tell you the truth, once I did get a belt sander, I kind of just kept using these <laughs> sanding blocks. They're really good for things like this. I got a lot of these kerf marks left on these 45 degree angle pieces. And so what I'm gonna do 
So I'm just gonna take a piece of 120 and we're just gonna sand these down. Okay, now that is a perfect miter. Now all we gotta do is clean up this uh, factory side and then we can go ahead and start our glue up. So this is one of those situations where it's kind of a strange glue up and I'm not really sure what clamps I would use anyway, so I'm just gonna go the economic route and just use painter's tape. Now you can clean this up as much or as little as you want because we are gonna sand this later, but I'm telling you, man, everybody needs baby wipes in the shop. They are infinitely useful. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm making a little bit of a slot for my phone. So I need the thickness of the phone and then I'm gonna want a front and a back to actually hold the phone. So I'm gonna double it and I'm just gonna use this as my spacer and then I'm gonna want it to be a, the same width as my phone. So this is the piece I'm gonna cut out. I broke off a little piece there. all it takes. There you go. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and chisel this out here and here. And really all we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a groove. We want this front piece to be nice and thick, but this back one doesn't have to be as much. This is just going to be the piece that insets inside the valet itself. Now I could easily take this over to the table saw and batch this out really quick, but I really think it's better that I do this by hand because I want everyone to understand that this is something that you can do no matter how much money you have. If you got something like 50 bucks in your pocket, I want you to be able to make something like this for someone that you care about. There's something about having a homemade gift, especially when it actually looks nice. You definitely don't wanna be the person to make a homemade gift that doesn't look nice, so make sure it's as beautiful as you can make it. But there's just something about a beautiful homemade gift that people really seem to appreciate more than something bought from the store anyway, so. I'm really worried that as soon as I hit this, I'm gonna break the wrong piece. This is gonna be very fragile in this orientation. So. That's it. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so you know how I was saying in the last video uh, that it's really important to try and find the X factor in every single project. Well, I just found it in this project. I wasn't actually planning on this until I realized what kind of space I was working with. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain exactly what I'm thinking, so what I'm just going to tell you is it starts out with resawing about this much of this board here. Now, in my opinion, this is actually a lot easier to do with hand tools than it is with machines. I have a tendency to always mess up this step with machine tools. But if you just go ahead and do this with a hand tool, you'll end up with a much better finish that you won't have to sand as much when you're done, and you won't need any other machines to kind of clean up any messes with the resawing method. So basically all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow my top line just like I always do, and I'm gonna roll it all the way back into my bottom line, follow the bottom line down, and just keep alternating back and forth from the top to the bottom. And as long as I'm very careful to follow both of my lines, the entire cut should be coplanar. Okay, in case you haven't noticed yet, I have changed up how I'm going to do the wallet a little bit. Uh, basically, this piece is gonna sit just like this. And we're gonna cut two pieces that are about, that are about this high. And that's gonna allow the wallet to slide in to a little pocket. Now you've noticed I've cut it a little bit long. That's important, and I'll show you why in just a second. Let me cut these pieces, I'll build the rest of this, and then we're gonna start on the back end of this. Okay, this being the inside, that's gonna be good enough. I don't really care too much. There we go. And one over the top for good measure. There we go. Okay, I've decided this is going to be the bottom of my tray. However, it's not wide enough to span this gap, and so I'm gonna have to fill that with a thickness of material. I'm gonna use the rest of my mahogany. This is walnut, by the way. And then our length is going to be 1.09. 
what we're gonna do. When it was time to start building this wraparound section, I needed to cut a thick piece down, which meant cutting out all of these parts about half of the thickness that they started. Then once all that was done, I could sand them down and mark out where it needed to recess into the main board. It's really not a great idea to glue end grain to face grain, so it's always a good idea to create some sort of joinery whenever you have that kind of interaction. There's a big controversy in the woodworking world whether there's a necessary or not, so do it however you want and don't at me, all right? Now it comes time for the holder for the belt. I decided I just needed something that I could loop the belt around, so all I really need to do is cut some sort of a slot in the bottom half of this main board so that the belt will just loop over the top L portion of the board. Simple enough. Now for part of this hidden section, I need a dowel with a magnet in it made out of mahogany. And since I can't really find a dowel made out of mahogany, I have to make one. And the easiest way to do that is to cut a long square section and then to use a hand plane to turn it into an octagon. And then I can take the octagon and knock all of the corners off of that to make it into a 16-sided whatever the heck that thing is called. And then I can take that 16-sided piece and turn it into a dowel just by sanding off all of those corners. If you've ever watched a blacksmith, this is how they create a round bar out of a square bar. I'm not sure if anybody else gets that reference, but it makes sense to me and I don't know how else to describe it. Okay, I'm finally ready for the glue up. Oh, I forgot my glue. All right, I'm finally ready for the glue up. My goodness, that took a lot longer than I was expecting. Uh, let's see. All right, you definitely want to get all of this glue off the surface, especially the most visible surface. This is going to be one of my most visible surfaces, and I'm already worried that even that much glue could ruin my finish. So let me get all of that off of that. We don't want any squeeze out on this one. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the glue away from this edge.
This joint here ended up just a little bit loose, and so I'm gonna put a little bit of extra glue in here. Hopefully I don't end up with too much squeeze out, but I want this to fill up all that loose space in there. Oops, that's not what you want. Well, all right, okay, all right. There we go. And that should dry right out of there. Okay, that's seated. Both of these are seated well enough to where I'm not really worried about putting pressure on it. If I start putting pressure on this, I'm worried that this one's gonna move and then it's not gonna be sealed. If you put a little bit of pressure on it and you get kind of a bit of suction on there, um, how do you explain that? There's a scientific principle where if you put you know, a liquid between two flat objects and you press them to get together, you actually get a little bit of suction there. Uh, sometimes that's enough if you have enough surface area where your glue is that should be enough to glue up your piece. Normally you'd want a little bit of clamping pressure, but that will work if you have enough surface area. So, I don't know, what's that effect called? Water tension, is it water tension? I'm not a science guy, I'm a wood guy. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. The last part I need to make for the secret compartment area was this holder for the wooden dowel and magnet. My idea is that this needs to look like something like a ring holder or a necklace holder hanging off the side of the board. The trick here is to drill a straight hole in the end of the board, about six inches long or so, and I found that if I look straight down the piece while drilling and turn it 90 degrees every quarter inch or so, I can drill a straight hole by eye. Other than a slot mortising machine or maybe a pantaretter, I'm not really sure what the right way to do this is, but I found I can be very accurate with this method. You just have to make sure that you keep turning the piece 90 degrees until the entire hole is cut. Oops, I just put my hand right in the glue. Fantastic. Ugh, I need, I need help. I need an adult! I'm just gonna wipe it off because I don't want to squeeze out on that side. So has everybody figured out what this is yet? Let me know if you figured it out in the comments. I feel like it's pretty obvious at this point, but basically this is going to be a ring holder or something similar, maybe necklace or something, whatever you want. And this comes out, there's a magnet on the end. This, I don't want to put it inside right now because it's gluing. I don't want to get glue on it. Basically, this is going to slide all the way in and you get something like a wallet. So the secret is there's a place to hide your wallet so that it's not as visible as all your other EDC stuff. But there's also going to be a hidden drawer. There are magnets on both sides of this drawer. And it pulls out and you can put whatever you want in there. And uh, honestly, I probably could have made this a little bit bigger. Uh, there's plenty of room back here, so I could have made this any size I wanted to store anything I wanted. And I don't know what to store in it, but it's cool! I'm enjoying this. I, I, I gotta wait for it to glue and then I can put the linseed oil on it. Okay, now that everything is basically done, the last step is the sanding. I decided to take this 220 grit sandpaper, I put it on my orbit sander, and I went over the entire surface, including rounding over all of the corners. Now, of course, if you don't have one of these, you can use one of the sanding blocks I showed you earlier. Now that I'm done with that, I can go over this entire thing one more time with a 320 grit hand sandpaper. This just takes all of the remaining grit and removes that, so you end up with this really nice, smooth surface. Ugh. 
And then once you've thoroughly made a mess, go ahead and uh, just wipe off all the excess linseed oil. And this is a good chance to buff all of the finish in uh, on the top of the wood. Uh, you can feel free to leave it on there for a little bit longer if you want. I usually buff it off after about five or 10 minutes. So this is probably the best shot you're gonna get of the mahogany with the linseed oil on it. And it is beautiful. And finally, here's the finished project. I absolutely love how this thing turned out. I always love the way mahogany looks when you put an oil on it. It darkens just enough and gives off this beautiful shine. I made something similar to this project in the past for a friend, and projects like this that are handmade, in my opinion, are just so much more meaningful than something bought from a store. It's one thing to earn money from your job and then use that money to buy a gift, but if you make something for someone instead, you're investing your time directly into something for that person. You'll be spending several hours or even days thinking about what that person wants and what they need. Customizing a project for a person just means so much more than ordering something off of Amazon, which could take not much more than five minutes of thought. I know we're all busy and I know none of us have as much time as we would like to take care of the people in our lives, but whenever you spend that extra time to do something specific for a person that you know that they'll enjoy, it just means so much more. And I think that just has so much power to it. Well, thank you for watching my video. Let me know in the comments if there's any projects you want to see me build. And if you could do me a huge favor and hit the like button so this video can be pushed out to more viewers, that would mean so much to me. Well, anyway, I gotta put my belt on because my pants haven't been staying up this entire time. So, I will catch you all next time. Go make something. <laughs>